over the next week, like the numbers just kind of kept going down or plateauing. And I was like, is this the beginning of the end? How is anybody ever going to hear about this show anymore? And it was just this sinking feeling. And I was starting to kind of just think that, hey, this, this, could, be, this could be the beginning of the end. Welcome to Stories of Hope in Hard Times, the show that explores how people endure and even thrive in difficult times, all with God's help. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson. Join me on a journey to find inspiring stories of hope and wisdom learned in life's hardest moments. I'm going to handle today's podcast just a little bit differently than I typically do in that I'm going to let the podcast play as normal, but because our guest time was so valuable, I don't make very many comments throughout. And so after the official interviews over, I'm going to take a few minutes and add my comments to what our guest has taught us in today's special episode. My next guest grew up in Maine and was active duty in the Army as an officer for four years. He tried law school but ended up being a first semester dropout. Then he tried corporate finance and then commercial real estate. But he felt he was just in the grind of going to work and getting a paycheck. One day on the way to work, he had an epiphany when a podcast he was listening to finished and he had nothing but the radio to listen to for the next 45 minutes of his drive. He wondered why there wasn't a seven day a week podcast to help make his commute more productive. Then came the aha moment. He could do it. He could start that seven day per week podcast. And he did. Podcasting has since become his passion. He is the host of Entrepreneurs on Fire, which is an award-winning podcast where he interviews inspiring entrepreneurs who are truly on fire. With over 2,000 episodes, 1 million listens a month, and seven figures of annual revenue, he is just getting started. He is the author of Podcast Launch, The 100-Day Gold Journal, The Freedom Journal, The Mastery Journal, and the podcast journal. I am pleased to introduce John Lee Dumas. John, are you ready to share your story of hope? I am prepared to share. How's Puerto Rico this morning? You know, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, I watch the sun rise over the Caribbean, and it's just a great way to start the day. That is fantastic. We've been to Puerto Rico a couple of times. We usually like to take cruises out of there. My my husband and I do. And um, I just really love that place. (laughs) It's a cool place, I will say. And uh, the locals would love how you pronounce it. So thank you for uh, just not going to the typical Puerto Rico that I started with for at least a year. (laughs) I'm lucky in that I speak Spanish, so that, mm-hmm. that kind of helps me just a little bit. But Yes, that would help. Have you had to learn Spanish while you've lived there? I haven't. You know, it's something that hypothetically I would like to do, but it's just not high enough on my priority list in my current world. Um, but someday it'll, it'll be happen. <laughs> very, very good. So I guess we'll just jump right in. Let's do it. Awesome. So... Dr. Ben Hardy did a study on what made entrepreneurs successful. He studied both those who had been successful and those who weren't. And he found that the key was a level of commitment and that those who were successful seemed to burn their past bridges so that they couldn't go back and invest in that future so that they had to become successful. Would you mind sharing a little bit of your story and how this applied to you? This did apply to me. So my quick story is after college, I was commissioned as an officer in the U.S. Army. And so I spent eight years as an officer leading men in a wartime environment, specifically Iraq, for a 13-month tour of duty. So it was a very intense and real military deployments slash experience. So after I got out, I kind of had this desire that I wanted to do something big. I really wanted to impact the world because 
I had just seen how precious life is and how quickly things can be altered, changed, or just taken away. And so I, I had that desire, did not translate into instant success by any stretch because I spent the next six years then trying to find what that focus was going to be for me and what that project was going to be. And to your kind of point about the burning bridges, I was doing that over and over again. I went all into law school, bought a condo, was all in, went there the first semester. Then I was like, nope, this is not for me. Quit, burned that bridge completely, left. Then I went all in to corporate finance and thought that was going to be the thing, bought a place in Boston, um, went all in, committed, and then walked away as I was continuing to get advancements and promotions at that job just because I realized I did not want to be there anymore until so it completely burned that bridge. And then I was offered a position as uh, on partnership track at a great commercial real estate firm in Portland, Maine, so near my hometown growing up. And mm -hmm. I went in on that and I went all in. And for a year, it was an interesting experience. There were some pros and there were some cons, but I realized in the at the end of the day, this was not the thing I was going to commit my life to either. And so I burned that bridge and left and completely pulled myself out of that race. So there I kind of was with my bridges burned multiple, multiple times, but, you know, giving it my all each step of the way, which I was very glad about because it made me realize quick that, hey, since I've been giving this my all and it's not the thing, let's get out. And so I kind of went through four different career paths in less than six years, which gave me an opportunity to really taste a lot of things and realize what wasn't for me, which took me one step closer to what was. And then when the idea of podcasting came up, I said, you know what, this is the next thing I'm going all in on. I've already burned my last bridge. Let's go all in and let's commit. I'm not going to just be a weekly podcaster because that's 52 times per year. How does anybody become good at anything doing it once a week? You don't. Right. There's no professional athlete that's practiced once a week that's become a professional athlete. It just doesn't happen. So I put in the reps 2,000 days in a row, 2,000 episodes. I went all in, burned all the other bridges. And here we are today, 2,200 interviews, 80 million listens, $16 million in total revenue. It was a good bridge to burn. Yes, it sounds like it was. So let me ask you a little bit about, I'm sure as you first began, that finding people to be on your podcast every single day must have been a bit of a challenge. Were there any rejections that were particularly hard for you to take? And if so, what did you do to keep yourself moving forward? No rejections were hard because I had the right attitude. I was like, why should these people want to be on my show anyways? I'm a nobody podcast host. I have no audience. I have no skills in podcasting. I mean, why should they waste their time doing this? I mean, that was just the reality of the situation. But I knew that if I put in the reps and I put in enough work and I asked enough people that I'd eventually get one or two yeses and that I could turn that into four or five and turn that into 10 or 12 and snowball. And that's what I did. And so for three months, I grinded it out. I got 40 interviews done on 400 to maybe 4,000 requests. I mean, I was putting it out there to anybody who would listen and it was just step by step. So every rejection was not, was not a surprise. It was expected and it was just saying, all right, let's go to the next one. And, you know, I'm a big believer and, you know, you've got to get nine no's to get to a valuable yes. So I love the no's because to me, that's just getting me one no closer to that eventual yes. So basically you did not take the no's personally. No. You were able to just say, this is part of the process. It's part of the process. And mentally be okay with that then. When, when, when did you have like a lowest low that you really had a hard time coming back from? I'd say my lowest low was the following. So I launched the podcast and it kind of became um, a little mini success right away because it just podcasting wasn't um, what it is today in 2019, back in 2012. There weren't that many podcasts. There wasn't a huge audience of listeners either, but there was enough listeners that when something new came out, like you kind of took notice because you're like, oh, okay. 
And when this daily podcast came out, that was completely different, completely new, caught a little buzz. And, you know, I immediately started off with a couple thousand listens on every single episode and my numbers were growing. And I remember for all eight weeks, I was featured in essentially the number one spot of the new and noteworthy section within iTunes. And so for eight weeks, my overall business ranking was super high. My new and noteworthy ranking was at one. It was just a great experience, a great feeling. The numbers were high. And then I remember at week nine or week eight in one day, mm-hmm. I was dropped off the new and noteworthy and I logged in and I wasn't no longer there, number one in new and noteworthy. And I logged into my stats and they were down like 80%. And I was like, oh my goodness. I'm like, whoa, I guess that new and noteworthy was really driving a lot of listens and a lot of subscribers. And over the next week, like the numbers just kind of kept going down or plateauing. And I was like, is this the beginning of the end? How is anybody ever going to hear about this show anymore? And it was just this sinking feeling. And I was starting to kind of just think that, Hey, this, this could be, this could be the beginning of the ends. But you know, the reality was one of the better things I did was I was so banked out, meaning that I was always 45 to 60 episodes ahead Mm -hmm. that even if I did stop interviewing, I still had like a month and a half to two months worth of content going out. And slowly but surely the, the numbers kind of bottomed out at a couple hundred to, you know, four or 500 per day. Mm -hmm. And then just slowly started growing and it was very slow and very sure. And you know, now we're sitting here today, we get anywhere from 40 to 60 to 80 to sometimes over 100,000 listens. And, you know, our podcast is over a million listens every single month. Um, But it didn't get here in a year. Like, this is year seven, this is episode 2224. Mm -hmm. It took time. Yeah. So basically, building for the future, even though you couldn't see it, perhaps, and um, just confidently moving forward as if you were already successful. Would you say those were the two things you did? No, because I can't use the word confidence in all transparency. (laughs) You know, I was moving forward with some anxiety, with some fear and with hope. That was really what I was moving forward with. How did you deal with the anxiety? I just got up and did the work every single day. I had a plan and I executed. And I think that's where a lot of people fail is they don't have a plan to execute on every single day. So when things start struggling, it's really easy to lose your way. So even though I had the fear and the doubt and the anxiety and the stress, I still had a plan to execute on every single day. So I could just get up and do what I had to do, what I wanted to do, what I needed to do. Wow, that's powerful. So make a plan and stick to it no matter what. No matter what. I love that. That's powerful. Um, I realize our time is almost up, but any final tips to people who are struggling to maintain hope? You've got to find your tribe. And by tribe, I really believe every single person who is an entrepreneur, a small business owner, you've got to find two to three other individuals who you know, like, and trust, and you have to form a mastermind. Not more than four people, not less than three people. That's the sweet spot. And every week you get together, you commiserate, you share your successes, you share your wins, your losses. And then there's one person of those three or four individuals who's on the hot seat for 45 minutes. And that hot seat just is talking about their biggest struggle and the group is in it together. Because when you do that and you have the accountability and you have the support, you are much more likely to get through the dips because we all hit the dips. That is powerful. So accountability is key. Accountability and support. Totally. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story of hope and your amazing and powerful tips that help pull you through your story. Tamara, it was great chatting. Thanks for the opportunity and have a wonderful day. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break, but when I get back, we will talk about the eight tips that John Lee Dumas brought up in his podcast and how I've been able to apply them and how you can apply them to your lives, no matter where you are. How many of you out there feel like your life is chaotic, crazy, and completely awful compared to the norm? 
What if I were to tell you that you are normal for you? I am so excited to announce that my book, Normal For Me by Tamara K. Anderson is now available for purchase on Amazon. This book took me 10 years to write and I share 20 years worth of lessons learned in my life detours, including being in a car accident and having two of my children diagnosed on the autism spectrum. In this book, I share the secrets of how I made it from despair to peace with God's help. I also include a bonus diagnosis survival guide at the very end of my Normal For Me book. The diagnosis survival guide includes 12 tips to survive and thrive in tough times. Wouldn't you like to know what those are? So what are you waiting for? Grab your copy of Normal For Me today on Amazon. Wasn't that an epic episode with John Lee Dumas? I feel so empowered to go and change the world now. So I'm going to take a few minutes now and do Tamara's takeaways from all these amazing tips that John Lee Dumas has shared with us, things that I probably would have commented on had it been a normal episode. But being that he had such little time, I thought I'd save my comments for the end. So tip number one, figure out what is holding you back from moving forward and burn that bridge. Um, you know, this is a powerful, powerful thing to pause and think about. I've noticed that every time I try to make some big steps forward in my life, there's something holding me back, and it usually revolves around fear. When I decided to start a podcast, so I went through a lot of the motions. I figured out my website, I figured out my logo, I figured out the name of the podcast, and then I had this big gap in the summer where I did absolutely nothing. And I said it was because my kids were home for the summer. But as I paused in September to kind of look back and think about everything that I had done that year so far, which was pointing me towards the podcast, I realized that I had a lot of fear that was holding me back. And that fear actually stemmed from being bullied as a sixth grader. And that was something that I thought I was over until I was going to put myself out there again, put myself out there in a vulnerable place, especially sharing personal stuff and having others share personal stuff, you really kind of expose yourself to the world. And all of a sudden, I found myself being held back by this previous fear. And so I had to journal about it and write about it and kind of think and pray about, is this what I'm supposed to do? And if it is, do I really believe God's going to help me? And it boiled down to, yes, I did believe that, but it was a tremendous step of faith on my part. Um, I recently went to a training with Richard Paul Evans, and we had a book burning there. And it's not a book burning in the traditional sense of what you would think about. It was a book burning in the sense of he had us list um, all the wrongs and all the hard things that had happened to us in our life. And then we were supposed to write about those things. And and at, we wrote this out. We spent quite a while writing about these past grievances. And then we took those books and we, we had a huge bonfire and we burned these books where we had written our past grievances, where we had written our past things that were holding us back. And it was powerful to be able to do that in a very physical way. And so I think that any of us, as we try to move forward, will find that there are things in our past that want to hold us back. And we may not even realize that they are still there. Things that we thought we were over. But sometimes in order to move positively forward, just like John Lee Dumas, we have to leave those things in the past, say, you know what, that didn't work. I'm moving on and not question that decision, but move forward confidently and with faith that things are going to work out. So that was the first tip that I loved that John Lee Dumas shared. The second tip was be 100% committed. And this is powerful. Um, you know, there's an interesting statistic that says that only 32% of employees in the United States are engaged 
in their work. And and so many people just aren't giving work 100%. And I think that's because they don't realize the impact they're making on the world. One of the tips this article in Inc.com suggested that would make a difference in people being committed to their job and to their work was if they could see how the work they were doing benefited the lives of the people they're working for or the people that they serve in a positive way. And they said that as people became aware that they were making a difference and what they were doing truly made a difference, that their productivity went way up. And so I think this kind of revolves around the thought that we each want to make a difference in the world, but we also need to figure out how we're going to do it and be able to figure out how what we're doing now or what we're not doing now is either contributing or not contributing to making this world a better place. And so I love that. Be committed. Be 100% committed. I know I've found that as I've started podcasting, it takes a lot of commitment to release a podcast on a regular basis. Obviously, JLD is in a league far above me because he released a daily podcast for years and years and years, and I can barely produce one every two weeks. But um, even doing that every two weeks, it takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of work. And, And so whatever you're doing, or in whatever goal you set, be 100% committed to that, to ensuring and working towards it so that you can make a difference. And it may even be in your own family. Maybe you start small, start with yourself, start with your family. And then as you set those goals and reach them, I think our confidence increases. So those are powerful, powerful tips. Be 100% committed. Tip number three is be prepared. Um, I loved that in JLD's lowest of his low, when his podcast seemed to drop off the face of the earth, when he wasn't getting the notoriety from the new and noteworthy list, that he said he had already built out 45 days um, in advance. So even though he was in a slump right then, he already had podcasts scheduled for the next 45 days. And so he was prepared enough to be successful in that arena for a month and a half, even if he did have a slump. And so what he did here was he prepared. He prepared. He knew that low times could come. He knew that incidences could happen that would prevent him from leasing a podcast. And so he said, I am going to be prepared. There's a great quote by Alexander Graham Bell that says, before everything else, preparation is key to success. And I think that's true. When my kids were young and challenging and having two kids on the autism spectrum was crazy, it was a task for us to go anywhere. I particularly remember preparing to get ready for church. Um, Sunday mornings were usually a fiasco at our home. Everything that shouldn't have gone wrong, always did. Somebody's shoe would disappear or somebody would have a blowout poopy diaper right before we're supposed to leave. And so I found that I wanted my Sunday morning to be a little more peaceful and calm so that I didn't arrive at church ready to pull my hair out. Um, And so I found that as I, I took little steps of like making the making a bag full of quiet toys for the kids that that was ready to go. It was in the car, setting aside the kids' church clothes, finding their shoes, finding their socks, having everything ready made things go a lot more smoothly. And so we can apply this this notion of being prepared in our own lives in so many different ways. It's not only being prepared in business, it's also being prepared in life. And and so if you feel like you're lacking in this, maybe pick one area in which you can improve and and try to be better prepared in that one area. And your life will go much more smoothly, just like it did for JLD in his low time, and just like it did for me with getting my kids ready for church on Sunday. The fourth tip is to be patient. And I love this quote that I once heard. It says, be patient. Great things take time. Empires aren't built in a day. And so often I feel like we live in a society where we want everything right now. 
And we don't realize the value of time and patience. Time and patience and working with God through things heals a lot of wounds. Um, things just aren't instant. Um, work takes time to produce results. Healing takes time. Diets and exercise take time to make our bodies what we want them to become. Children take time to teach and grow and learn. And our lives take time to figure out. And so being patient is just key with all of this. We need to be patient and patient with ourselves and patient with others because none of us are perfect. Dieter F. Uchtdorf once said, this is a race of endurance. We have to apply and reapply the divine principles. Day after day, we need to make them part of our normal lives. We are too often like the farmer who places a seed in the ground in the morning and expects corn on the cob by afternoon, end quote. So that one's perfect to describe how we usually react when in reality we need to give ourselves grace and patience as we work through life and as we work through challenges and as we set goals they are not going to be hit in a moment. And JLD was patient as his podcast built back up and became successful again. Again, he has been at this for seven years and he is amazingly successful, but it didn't come from one day or one month or one year of working. It came from years and years of dedicated work. And, and that is what has built him to become who he is today. Tip number five, move forward as if. There's a fantastic quote by Eric Thomas that says, what you envision in your mind and how you see yourself and how you envision the world around you is of great importance because those things become your focus. And focus and envisioning the future have become really, really a big buzzword in the last couple years. And I have a vision board that sits right above my desk, and it has quotes and pictures and things that inspire me to keep moving forward. It has my yearly goals. It has my monthly goals on it. And as I look at those on an almost daily basis, it helps me remember why I am doing what I'm doing, why I am podcasting, why I am writing, why I am speaking. And those, that reason is to inspire hope. I want to inspire hope in others, especially those who are struggling right now, because I've been there. I've been in those hard times. I know what it feels like. I know what despair feels like. I know what hopelessness feels like. And so if I can inspire that younger version of myself who I know is out there, and I've spoken to several people who have, who have come to me with challenges and, and just wanted to talk about some of the issues in their lives, um, it has been very fulfilling to be able to give back a little bit of the hope that I've been able to gain by continually doing things that have kept me successful. So move forward as if you're already successful. That was what JLD did. That is what I'm trying to do. And I think as we set these goals and move forward, we will eventually reach that goal. Tony Robbins said, if you talk about a dream, it's a dream. If you envision it, it's possible. But if you schedule it, it's real. End quote. So schedule, write things down, make them happen, and you will reach your dreams. Another powerful tip was rejection is a part of the process. Um, I don't know that I had ever thought about rejection the way JLD described it, in that for him, it was not something... Let me see if I can find his quote really quick. When I asked John if he had, if any of the rejections were particularly hard on him or slowed his forward progress, he said, no rejections were hard because I had the right attitude. And what he did is he kind of saw these rejections as stepping stones. Um, he knew that he had to get nine no's to get a valuable yes. It was just statistics and hard work. And so he loved the no's because he realized that just got him closer to an eventual yes. And I thought that was so, so powerful. And so one of the things as I've interviewed people I've, that I have noticed is that people who become successful and confident are able to look at their past failures or their past hardships and find the lessons in them. And that's what JLD was doing. He was just using it as, as a stepping stone. He was using it to propel him forward. And so I think this concept of 
having a rejection or a hard thing in your life is so universal among us. But the, the thing that differentiates people from being truly great and successful is how they view their past. Do they view it as something that they should get down and depressed over because they had the rejection? Or do they have a winning mentality of that is just a stepping stone for me? Look at all that I learned from that. And so I think that is just a powerful, powerful lesson that we need to internalize and learn. Um, lesson number seven, stick to the daily plans in hard times. I love this, that JLD had a plan and he stuck to it. It didn't matter that he was at a low point in his life right then. In fact, he said, so even though I had the fear and the doubt and the anxiety and the stress, I still had a plan to execute on every single day. And I think that the, that is such a huge lesson. So many times we're just kind of wandering through life aimlessly. And how many of us do have a plan that we're going to do these five things every morning? You know, maybe we're going to get up, we're going to exercise, we're going to meditate, we're going to connect with God or to deity or how whoever you believe in. And they do that every day, no matter what. And then they have a goal that's pulling them forward. That is what JLD was doing, even in his lowest of low points. I have found that as I've used a journal and a planner and goals, that they have also pulled me forward. And I'm really, really thankful for that. I value my quiet time in the morning. I do get up early, but it has become extremely powerful because it sets the entire pattern for my day. If I get up, if I am on the ball and I hit the day running, then I am successful the rest of the day. And I'm really thankful for that principle that seems to be applied among successful people. The final and eighth tip that JLD shared was mastermind accountability. And this is a powerful lesson. Um, I don't know what it is about just being reliant on ourselves, but so often if we're not accountable to somebody else, we will not fulfill our goals. If you do, if you're not accountable to somebody else and you still reach your goals, dang, kudos to you. I've been in an accountability mastermind group since October of last year, telling this group that I've set a goal and then having to report back if I have met that goal. Oh, that is, I can tell you that so many times the night when I'm supposed to be reporting back, I am there quickly doing that goal, even if it's a few minutes of it, because I don't want to tell them that I didn't do it. <laughs> and so and so, if you have an accountability group, if you have a mastermind group, I think it is so important to have people that you can know, that you know, love and trust, um, that are moving forward also in a positive direction. You don't necessarily even have to have the same goal but just be moving forward in a positive direction. And that will help you move forward with power because you are accountable to someone. And it's also great when you're stuck in a rut to have people to kind of bounce ideas off of. And sometimes these other people that have learned to know and love and trust you will have ideas that you have not even thought of yet. And so it is just powerful to be a part of a group that is wanting and looking out for each other, that wants the other person to be successful just as you want them to be successful. So find somebody like that for you. It is powerful. So those are the eight tips that JLD shared with us. Figure out what's holding you back from moving forward and burn that bridge. Be 100% committed. Be prepared. Be patient move forward as if. So visualize that result. Rejection is a part of the process. Stick to daily plans in hard times. And finally, number eight, have a mastermind accountability group. Anyway, hope those can help you see how these principles in business can apply to your life today. Whether you're a business person or a stay-at-home mom or a caretaker or a teacher, these 
successful principles can apply to every single one of us. So set your goals, reach them, and move forward with hope. If you would like to connect with Mr. John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneurs on Fire, I encourage you to visit his website. It is eofire.com. I will also put John's books that he has written in the show notes. If you are interested in starting a podcast, I strongly suggest looking into them. He is one of the people that I used as a mentor as I started my podcasting journey, and he really knows what he's doing. So I highly, highly recommend John Lee Dumas of eofire.com. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's show. I know that there are many of you out there that are going through a hard time, and I hope you found things that have been useful today as you listen to the podcast. If you would like to access the show notes from today's podcast, visit my website. It is storiesofhopepodcast.com. That is where you'll find favorite quotes from today's episode and shareable memes. And those are fun because you can share them with your friends on social media. You will also find the links mentioned throughout today's episode, so you don't have to remember what those were. And also all the tips that were shared. Sometimes tips are shared so much throughout an episode, you forget what were those great things. So go to the show notes, storiesofhopepodcast.com to look up these fantastic resources. You know, if someone kept coming to mind during today's episode, perhaps that means that you should share this with them. Maybe there was a story shared or a tip that they really, really need to hear. So go ahead and share this episode with them. May God bless you, especially if you are struggling with hope to carry on and with the strength to keep going when things get tough. Remember to walk with Christ and he will help bear that burden. Above all else, Remember, God loves you.